back with Enoch chapter 20, where we are given the names and functions of the seven archangels. And I want to solidify Enoch, because he was the first writer ever. And what he recorded, what he saw, is so powerful. It will help your spiritual understanding like no other. Now we get told all these stories and myth, myths is just a bunch of confusion. You know, we we uh we taught that everybody when they die they go to heaven and things like that and and hell you or you go straight to hell and in hell the devil is there with a pitchfork and it just really don't work like that. So that's that's my whole reason of coming out with all this truth and clearing up some things. Give us some clear understanding on how it worked. So that's why Enoch give us the functions that really take us to places that we ain't been yet. So we can see how this going how this going end, how this going wrap up. We was told these things. We have no excuses, especially when he when he blessing people with the knowledge. He said he was going to pour out his spirit, and here we are. We sharing the light. We ain't hiding the light. We shining it in this, in this dark world, this dark fallen world. So hopefully you're getting wisdom and understanding and go do your own studying. So let's kick it off. Verse one. And these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels who was over the world and Tartarus. Now Tartarus is the lowest parts of hell basically the fallen angels that stay prison where the lake of fire is that's what Uriel is over and we know that now we see why Uriel was the angel that gave the end time prophecy to Ezra so so in such detail now we see why verse 3 Raphael one of the holy angels who was over the spirits of men now see that Raphael is over the spirits of men the souls did not go to heaven. They went to them chambers. Remember those three chambers I showed the other day? One was for the wicked. I'm sorry. One was for the for the martyr. One was for the holy. And one was for the wicked. Raphael is over those chambers. So ain't no Satan down there poking with a pitchfork, tormenting nobody. These spirits are asleep and they are being protected by archangel. Verse 4. Raguel. One of the holy angels who take vengeance on the world of the luminaries. Those fallen angels. And Raguel going to take vengeance on them. Now this is not no, no order of the seven archangels. This is just basically breaking down their roles. Chapter 40. Going to more detail about you know some of the, who, is, who is number one basically. The order. Michael is number one. Verse 5. Michael, one of the holy angels to wit that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos so michael's this is this is what we started what got this all started because in the book of daniel we was reading that the gabriel that the angel gabriel was talking to daniel and he told him he said um he said i will in verse in daniel chapter 10 verse 21 he said but i will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but michael your prince so we seen that that Gabriel was giving us a hint like yo prince Michael. So now we see that Michael is set over the best part of mankind which we know is the children of Israel that God made that covenant with. We know Michael is the one who's going to rise up, who's going to stand up in the last days and fight for us. We know that. And Michael was he was not mentioned nowhere else in the Old Testament prior to this Daniel account so where's the scripture of truth that he was talking about that Gabriel was talking about it's the book of Enoch this powerful book that was hidden from us also in Daniel we see that he was told to shut up the book and sell it to the end in the last days knowledge was going to increase it wasn't going to be no new knowledge falling out the sky it's, it's going to be this this ancient knowledge that was passed down from our forefathers that was hidden away by the evil one and his army but he going to reveal all things. God going to reveal all things and he preserve his word. If you study, you will see clear. 
So uh, what we leave off at? Oh, and then uh, so you over chaos as well, Michael over chaos. Chaos we know is Satan. That's the enemy. That's the adversary. And he's over that. He Michael is the restrainer. It's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit played a different role. Played different roles. He's the comforter, the teacher, plus many more. He got a beautiful role. So that is not the Holy Spirit that restrained. That is Michael. Scripture is so clear. We just really read it. Verse 6. Sirachiel, one of the holy angels who was set over the spirits who sin in the spirit. Those fallen angels that sin in the spirit. That's who over them. Verse 7. Gabriel. Gabriel, that's the one from Daniel. One of the holy angels who was over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Serpents, that, the angels and the cherubim. The, the two cherubims with the flaming swords that was set in front of the Garden of Eden. And, and one entrance. Because it's only one way to get into the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is in the earth, inside the earth. And he is over them. We'll go into more detail. Last but not least, Remiel, one of the holy angels whom Elohim set over those who rise. Amen. Amen. And when you see that name, Fanuel, in chapter 40, referring to the same angel, it's the same angel. Same angel. But this one, Remiel, this is the one who's in charge over the dead in Christ who should rise first. Remember that scripture? Now we see how this all play out. That's why I wanted to get into, into these angels. Like, our whole concept of the Bible had been so watered down, man. We must, we must seek relationship with God. Because he's been pouring out his spirit. And if you know anything about the scripture, then you know what we headed towards. We headed towards a time where Satan is going to set himself above God. He ain't, that's in his own mind. He'll never be able to do that. But in his own mind, he's going to get people to worship him. He's going to get you to take that mark of the beast. If you ain't spiritually strong, if you ain't putting on the whole armor of God, he's going to deceive you. He's going to, he going to send, take a lot of y'all to hell with him to be burnt in that lake of fire. That second sting of death is real. That's why we told don't fear those who can kill a body, but can't kill your soul. But fear the one that can kill your soul and your body and send you to hell. So fear our God, our Elohim, the true Elohim, Yahuwah, over these fake imposters. Now, ooh, let's wrap it up. So we see here, if y'all read the side notes, pause it and get some understanding. So I know it's there. And now we're getting to the bottom. So that's it for chapter 20. But we see the Qumran scrolls mention angels by name also. In addition to scripture, the local community writings also mention four of these archangels. Michael, Gabriel, Sariel. Sariel, that's the same as Sarakiel. That's the same angel, archangel. And Raphael. The War Scroll, page 174. The Book of War, page 188 by Giza Verms. Michael, the War Scroll, page 183. Words of the Archangel Michael, page 556. And Zedekiah, Apocrypha, page 591, Verms. Gabriel, in a Garden of Eden in the East. Words of the Archangel Michael, page 556 by Giza Verms. Thus, five of these seven are mentioned outside of Enoch as Uriel is the main angel in 2nd Ezra. Ragiel is out of view for everyone, but Enoch, who saw the chamber where he dis where he disciplines the luminary angels, Remiel is also a hidden is in a hidden role, not one Israel would encounter. Why? Because Enoch was the one who was taken on a journey to see all these things. Not us, Enoch, the first writer who literally wrote the stuff down for us to have in this last remote generation, like he said. But, oh, we disregard it. Why? Because these people with these titles in front of their name tell y'all, out of ignorance, 
when y'all don't understand these are the scoffers that the bible talk about so continue to be deceived if you want to or read it for yourself pray for understanding and watch what the holy spirit gonna do just watch last but not least the bottom we're gonna get into gabriel a little deeper say gabriel angel of the east from the garden of eden See, the Garden of Eden is on earth. See, they tell you, oh, we don't know what the Garden of Eden is. Okay, the Bible tell us we know what the Garden of Eden is. In the Far East, under the Philippines, Havila, that's what the Garden of Eden is. So, Gabriel, angel of the East from the Garden of Eden. Uh, how are we going to do this? Let's zoom in. Let's say Enoch places the Garden of Eden in the Far East with Gabriel in charge now. This is consistent with the scripture. This is consistent with scripture in Revelation chapter 7, verse 2 through 3. And I saw another angel ascending, ascending, meaning coming from, up, up, not descending, coming down. He's ascending from the east. Having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads only an archangel will have such authority notice gabriel ascended out of the out of the earth from the garden in which he is in charge he is also in the very presence of yahuwah there not in heaven but within the earth and luke 1 19 and the angel answered saying to him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God. Gabriel is not in heaven, but in the garden of Eden, and Yahuwah is holy of holies within the earth, just as Enoch witnessed affirmed by the book of Jubilees. Amen. And it's been 12 minutes of goodness, I pray, for those who really seek, man. Take time to really listen to this Bible. I'm reading it to you, because I don't want to hold the light. It's like why would he bless us with the knowledge? Those who he blessed us with just for us to keep it to ourselves. We yearning to get this truth out. We want more people walking in truth and in light. Because all this darkness that's in this world, it get frustrating at times. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Boy, I'd be ready to snap. That's why I get in these scriptures and say, okay, I, I was told what was going to happen, what's going to come, and how I must remain humble and meek. So... I practice on that. I pray on that. So until next time, I pray to spark y'all to want to study more. Ask more questions. It'll help me better if I'm answering questions because, you know, when you're on a certain level, it's hard to try to meet somebody at, a, you know, at, the, at, a, at a different level because I don't want to confuse you because it's like, man, I don't know where, I, where I'm going to start at and how to break it down in the simplest forms but i try my best so it's a work in progress man so for those on that walk walk the walk stand firm and put on the whole armor of god it's perilous times are coming man so much is coming it ain't to scare you it's to prepare you for what's coming now we know what salvation is you've been saved from this wickedness on this earth man yeah you're gonna die all of us must die but you don't want to feel that second sting of death and be thrown in that lake of fire and be burnt up and none will remain but smoke and, and the smell of dust. I'm sorry, but dust and the smell of smoke from our Messiah. I'm out. You want to walk them streets of gold.